Let's take a look at the number of lone pairs and the number of bonding pairs for I3 minus. So we start with a valid Lewis structure. This is our Lewis structure here for I3 minus. We have the brackets around it and the negative sign because it is an ion. So if we look at the Lewis structure here and we look at the central iodine atom, these electrons right here, the ones between the atoms, these are shared. So these are what we call bonding pair electrons. They're shared in a covalent bond. So bonding pair electrons, we have two pairs. Lone pairs, these are the ones that aren't involved in chemical bonds. So for this iodine right here, we have one, two, three. So we have three lone pairs around this central iodine atom in I3 minus. You could also count the lone pairs here on the iodines on the outside. We have one, two, three on each of those, but usually we're only interested in that central iodine atom. Let's take a look at the molecular geometry to see the effect of these lone pairs here. So you can imagine we have that iodine atom in the center, and let's add one on either side. So this would give us this linear molecular geometry. But lone pairs, they occupy space. They'll actually push these iodine atoms around. They'll repel them. So let's add our three lone pairs. One, you can see it pushes down, and then we got two more. Two, and finally, we add the third one, and we end up with a linear molecular geometry for I3 minus. So the lone pairs, they're important when we try to understand the molecular geometry for an ion like I3 minus. Let's go back. So to recap, we have these three lone pairs and then these two pairs of electrons between the atoms. These are the bonding pairs. So we have two bonding pairs. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.